Okay, so I just came back from the Apple Store with the brand new M2 MacBook Pro. And obviously this is the most uh, underwhelming product from the Apple event, but I do want to try a few things. I want to see if the speakers are any different, uh, the microphones, the camera, and most importantly, I want to see the performance of that M2 chip. But first, let's quickly unbox it. Uh, the wallpapers are technically the same. The reason why this one looks different is because this is the silver, whereas this is the box of the Space Gray. But if you look at images of the silver boxes for the M1, they actually haven't changed the wallpaper at all. It's the same box. I want to see if there's anything different inside the box, uh, if we get any changes in terms of the manual or the accessories. So I've had a look at all the accessories and everything is exactly the same as on the M1 model, with one exception, and that is the chart. So there's a new charger, which has 67 watts of power delivery compared to 61 watts, which is what the M1 model had. In fact, this is actually the exact same charger that we get with the base 14-inch MacBook Pro. More about the M2 MacBook Pro right after this. This video is sponsored by Banwerk and their luxury line of Apple accessories, including premium Maxi phone cases, bespoke watch straps in a variety of styles, and the perfect AirTag keyrings. They can even use the same material for multiple items so that you have all of them matching perfectly. Check out Banwerk's lineup by using the link below. And now, back to the video. So that was the unboxing, and now, Let's get to the testing. And these are the three MacBooks that I want to test. The base M2, the base M1, and the base 14-inch. Okay, so this is a microphone and a camera test on the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro. And now this is the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro. Um, the sensor is exactly the same, but the image processing might be a little bit different because of that M2 chip. So let me know if you see any improvements over the M1. And now this is the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. This should be the overall best because it does have a 1080p sensor compared to 720p on the other ones. Uh, but maybe the processing is worse than on the M2. So let me know how does this compare to the M2 and the M1. Now let's do a speaker test and see if there's any differences between the M2 and the M1 and also the 14 inch of course. Uh, so this is the M1 MacBook Pro. Swipe left, someone said something stupid. Swipe right now, I'm watching what you did. I put down now, I'm at a disadvantage. But I think that it's worth it. I put my headphones on. I play my favorite song. I go to sleep and try again. Honestly, I couldn't hear any difference between the M2 and the M1. Of course, the 14 inch was significantly better. So now I want to open up a few apps at the same time and see if there's any difference between the M2 and the M1. I would expect the M2 to be a bit snappier uh, in day-to-day -day use, and we should be able to see that in this test. In three, two, one, go. So I think the M2 was a tiny bit faster than the M1, but the difference was like, very difficult to see. And now let's see how it stacks up against the 14 inch in three, two, one, go. But to me, they looked pretty much the same. Okay, and now I wanna do some real world tests and see what the difference actually is between all of these three MacBooks. So first off, I wanna test the disk speed to see if there's any differences between the M1 and the M2. I would expect the M2 to maybe be a tiny bit faster than the M1 and Wow, I am quite surprised because we're getting about one gigabyte to 1.5 gigabytes per second slower speeds on the M2 than compared to the M1. Now, our M1 model does have 512 gigabytes of storage, but even when we tested the 256, it was actually getting similar speeds to the 512, which means that maybe Apple has put in a slower drive inside the M2 MacBook Pro than we had last year, or maybe our model has uh, some sort of issue, but we are seeing considerably slower speeds on the M2. And then looking at the 14-inch model, we're seeing over five gigabytes per second write, and about the same in terms of the read speeds, which are about double the ones on the M1, and uh, like what, four gigabytes per second higher than on the M2. So in Blender, I rendered the classroom scene using the Cycles CPU renderer, and the M1 rendered in 14 minutes and 24 seconds, the M2 in 12 minutes and 41 seconds, and the M1 Pro 14 inch in 12 minutes and 12. So the M2 was almost as fast as the M1 Pro. So even though they have exactly the same core counts, the M1 Pro has six high performance cores to low performance, whereas the M2 has four and four. Something else that I've noticed was the battery drain. So the M1 lost 11%, the M2 lost 10%, and the M1 Pro lost 13%. So the M2 
was by far the most power efficient out of the three. Now, doing the exact same test but now using the GPU, every single machine was considerably faster. The M1 took 5 minutes and 30 seconds, the M2 took 4 minutes and 11 seconds, and the M1 Pro took 3 minutes and 49 seconds. The M1 Pro lost 6%, and then the M2 and the M1 Pro both lost 4%. So what about video editing? Well, here I have a 15-minute 4K H.264 project, one of our previous camera comparisons. Uh, this is a very demanding project, by the way. And the M1 took 1 hour, 2 minutes and 57 seconds to export. The M2 took 44 minutes and 2 seconds. So it was considerably faster, but then the M1 Pro took 16 minutes and 18 seconds, a huge difference from even the M2. And in terms of the battery drain, the M1 lost 35%, the M2 lost 32%, and the M1 Pro lost 18%. So if you're video editing on a daily basis and you have some complex projects, then uh, definitely go with the 14 inch. Then in compressor, I'm going to transcode an H.265 file uh, to ProRes 4K. The M1 took 2 minutes and 53 seconds, the M2 1 minute and 13 seconds, so big, big difference. And the M1 Pro took 1 minute and 14 seconds, so the M2 was actually faster than the M1 Pro by 1 second. But the interesting thing here is that the M1 lost 2%, but the M2 and the M1 Pro didn't lose any battery at all. So it looks like having dedicated hardware engines for this task is not only quicker, but also way more power efficient. If you do a lot of transcoding, then the M2 and the M1 Pro would be a big bump from the uh, M1. Now, when it comes to converting an H.265 file to ProRes 6K, in this case a 6 minute clip, the M1 took 6 minutes and 59 seconds, the M2 2 minutes and 2 seconds, and the M1 Pro 2 minutes and 19 seconds. So the M2 was once again faster here, but now by a larger margin. Also, the M1 lost 4%, M2 2%, and M1 Pro 1%. Okay, and now I want to do a Logic Pro test. Essentially, I have a selection of loads of tracks here, and I want to see how many they can each play uh, until they crash. So, for example, this is the uh, M1 with 68 tracks, and as you can see, it crashed. But if I remove one track, now we're at 67. It seems like this one can play 67 tracks perfectly. Now, on the M2 model, I was able to play two more tracks. So we have 69 tracks in total. So a very small difference over the M1. And on the base 14 inch, I was able to play 118 tracks, which is very interesting because the core count is exactly the same as on the M1 and the M2. So the only difference is the memory in this one. This has 16 gigabytes. So it seems like the memory does actually help these chips uh, play more tracks. Now let's try some gaming. So here I have World of Warcraft, which is one of the few games that actually run natively on Apple Silicon. So this is the best case scenario. The M1 Pro got 31 frames per second, the M2 got 41.5, so that's a pretty significant bump, and then the M1 Pro got 71. Okay, now in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is at this point the, you know, the default Mac gaming test, the M1 got 12 frames per second, the M2 got 17, and the M1 Pro got 27. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider does not run natively, but it does use Apple's Metal API, so it is more optimized than a lot of the other games. And the two extra GPU cores did make a difference in terms of gaming, but unfortunately, the M1 Pro has four more GPU cores than the M2, which are vastly superior. So in the end, should you get the M2 MacBook Pro over, let's say, the M1 or even the M1 Pro? Well, I think that if you already have an M1, you shouldn't upgrade, unless you do transcode a lot of footage, because in that case, the M2 was significantly faster than the M1. Also, since Apple is not selling the M1 MacBook Pro anymore, uh, and you're just looking to buy a new M2 Mac, then uh, this is a pretty good option. However, if you can find a good deal for a refurbished or a used M1 MacBook Pro, then I do think that you should go with that one instead. Definitely be on the lookout for a 16 gigabyte of RAM model uh, on eBay or Amazon or Apple refurbished, as that one would give you a tiny performance bump over the standard M1, uh, and it would also be more future-proofed in the long run. Now, if you do want to buy it brand new, the base model is pretty good. Um, I would actually avoid upgrading, uh, because the moment you start upgrading this, you will actually get very close in price to the 14-inch model. From the start, there's a $700 difference between the two, but if you bump the RAM to 16 gigabytes and the storage to 512 to match the 14 inch, the 14 inch would only be $300 more. In which case, I do believe that a 14 inch is definitely worth it. You get a significantly better display, uh, ProMotion and Mini LED. You also get more ports and extra Thunderbolts, uh, MagSafe, fast charging. You also get a better keyboard, uh, or at least with the lack of touch bar. And of course, significantly better performance in the graphics department. But only do so if you really need that extra performance that the 14-inch has to offer. If you consider yourself a pro, 
then do go with the 14 inch. What I'm really curious to see is how the M2 MacBook Pro will compare to the new M2 MacBook Air. I do have a feeling that this year we will be seeing a bigger performance difference between uh, the Air and the Pro. In fact, when we were testing the M2 MacBook Pro, we actually heard the fan being on almost all the time during the Blender test, whereas the M1 model or even the 14 inch, uh, they were pretty much silent. So yeah, definitely stay tuned to the channel, subscribe to see the MacBook Air video as soon as we have it. And if you are interested in purchasing any of these, feel free to use the affiliate links below as they do help out the channel as well. I'm Daniel, this is Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.